Made Up Podcast with me, Bailey. And me, Jasmine. And today we're going to be talking about my life as a courgette, slash my life as a zucchini, depending on your region. Uh, it's a Swiss French animation directed by uh, Claude Barras, or Barre, I don't know. Um, I couldn't find him on how to pronounce the name.com that we've been using <laughs> for every episode. I'm not even joking, it's a real website, check it out. Um, uh, so it's the story of a little kid called Courgette. Courgette. Or well, that's what his mother calls him, and he wants to be called that. But that's not his real name. But he calls himself Courgette. Everyone has to call him Courgette. And his mother passes away, and he goes to live in an orphanage with a bunch of other kids. And it's just sort of a little bit of escapades of their life. It's not really very plot-driven. No. Uh, he meets... Another me. girl comes in, yeah, and they meet. But that's about as much as really is to be said about the story. Yeah. So, uh, Jasmine, what did you think of... My life as a courgette. Slash zucchini. Slash zucchini. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. It's the kind of movie that is just pleasant to watch. It's very emotional. Um, made me cry. Ten out of ten. Um, <laughs> it's up there with Mamma Mia then. Yeah. yeah. No, and um, what was it? The the ridiculous six. Yeah, the ridiculous. Yeah, so six. it's up there with the best of the no, best. No, no, no. It's it's way better than <laughs> than, than by far the No, but the the movie is very. Very pleasant to watch, even though it is sad. You, mm-hmm. You'd think that you'd, well, if you have any idea of the story, you'd feel more sad and more kind of emotional. But it's it just feels kind of nice, even though it's quite sad. I guess it has nice ty- nice um, ending and kind of upbeat in the end. Um, and I really enjoyed it. There was maybe some parts that I found a bit almost shortened out to some degree like I felt like sometimes things kind of just happen and I I was like okay I guess that was a thing and that thing moved on quite quickly but um I, I forgive it for that because it, it is a, I would almost rec- want to call it a short film it's uh yeah just to get the context in there the movie yeah. is like 65 minutes with credits so it's basically an hour long yeah. if not maybe a little bit less yeah but the starting yeah. yeah it's really short um so i would almost it, it feels like a short film in that sense that this there's no time to really go really deep and it do, doesn't need to to be a good story um it just has that essence of like things move on quite quickly um and it doesn't take place over a big time of their life um, if anything, it's a couple months, possibly. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to summarize what you think about it, but yeah, I think that's what I want to say. What What do you feel, Bailey? Um, well, Jasmine, <laughs> um, I really liked it. I think I liked it more than you. I thought it was really great. Um, it just captures the whole spectrum of childhood. You know, like it really, really doesn't shy away from the hard stuff. Oh yeah, no, like definitely. I feel like that's almost the point of the film is to like be pretty straightforward. Like courgettes, the first thing you see is courgette picking up beer cans and using them to Spin make toys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from his mother. So it doesn't, and it never shies around like like people have got. No, that when we saw that that scene, we saw him. He walked down into the living room and he started mm-hmm. picking up beer cans, and you'd think it was gonna be something more sadder or him being more confused but he was just like it was absolutely normal, normal lifestyle yeah. there's loads of beer cans everywhere and i'm just gonna play with them as toys yeah and he later on keeps like a um when he goes to the orphanage he keeps one beer can as like a mm-hmm. member of her which was just um too real you know yeah <laughs> it, 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 it's it's really I don't know. I thought it was really good. I don't think it needed to be much longer. It is very short. I didn't think either it, was sh- it should be. But it captures longer. all the emotions it needs to. And I think the characters are really nice and mm. strong and feel like real children. Oh, yeah, all of them. Um, like the way Courgette kind of sulks at the beginning of the movie. Like, he doesn't really talk to anyone. He kind of sits oh, on but... his own. Not, not, sulks not in a bad way. Mm. But that felt very real. Yeah. Like, you see kids do that. They kind of isolate themselves. And it's just. There's so many moments that are just, like, horrible. Like, there's this running kind of gag where one of the kids' mothers was deported. Oh, and yeah. whenever oh. And whenever a car comes up, he runs outside and goes, Mom! Oh, God, yeah. It happens every time. And it happens every time. Every yeah. time a car comes in the in the plot, he always comes out. Um, 
which is just so, it's it it's again funny. they they set it up like a running g- gag, but it makes you kind of just go oh every time yeah. it's really uh, and I I, I kind of yeah. like that they they can take it kind of lightly. Yeah. Because it's kind of a way of just dealing with it things. It is kind of that, amusing that yeah, he has that, but it's but also it very telling about who this person is. Yeah, like, you'd see that in a comedy movie and you'd think it's supposed to be funny, mm-hmm. but in this context, it's it gets sadder the more it happens. Yeah, you know? yeah, it definitely does. Um, I think uh, that's kind of indicative of what, what I think really makes the film great, is that it's really good at telling the story through film. I think partly because mm-hmm. it's... It's probably oh, oh, low budget, um, and you can see they often have a lot of stuff happening in a single frame. Yeah, which, uh, I, which I always get the think is of... to their advantage. Which yeah, it definitely I love is. It definitely is. And I thought like had to think about it. Yeah, right? I thought like that might have had to come from the budget constraints because obviously it's like I thought that too. About as short as a feature film mm. can technically be, so I suspect they had not too much to work with. Mm. Uh, but there's a great two shots uh, quite early on when. So the kid has a kite for his dad and the beer can for his mom. And uh, the shot is of the window at night. The first night he's sleeping in the orphanage. Yes. And then it turns to day. You know, you've seen that shot before. Well, it's like, yeah. Yeah, and and you see the the kite flying. And you're like, okay, he's flying the kite. Then it cuts to a shot of him in the bed. And the drawer where he's kept his kite open and empty. In just one shot, yeah. And it just tells you everything... And it's so much more evocative. The same with the beer can scene we referenced. Mm. It's so evocative because the movie doesn't go out of its way to tell you. It lets the images tell you what's happening. Yeah. And it just makes it so much there more There isn't that thing. much dialogue. There, no, there's not a huge amount. And a lot of the storytelling doesn't happen through dialogue. No, 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 definitely not. Maybe that also comes with it being clay and being stop motion. I don't even... If we, did we tell them it was made of clay? Uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, it's, it's a, I did say it's animated, I think. Yeah, uh, but animated could be... It's, it's a digital. clay slow motion film, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think... Stop some... motion, not slow motion. Slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, imagine that. Um, this is Zack Snyder film. <laughs> uh, what was it saying? Because it's stop motion, not slow motion, uh, it's really taking time i think it might even be harder to animating people talking than making nice actual interesting frames Mm -hmm. which i think they use for their advantages because i always stand by having interesting frames that tell the story instead of having somebody explain how they're feeling it's just more hard hitting right because you put it together in your head yeah and it feels like you discovered it to some degree and i think there's my my favorite Part, which I think you noticed that I liked the most because I was like, oh my god. Okay. Um, was the part where they, their whole orphanage is going on a trip and they're by like a skiing resort or something. Mm-hmm. And then they see another kid with his mum and they're all standing uh, in the same shot. Yeah. Like almost like on a row. Uh, I think that is our cover photo. It is our cover photo. If you're watching this in the future, go. If you're watching this in the future, go onto Facebook and uh, you can scroll back for our previous cover photos and you'll see. The one this from... is the one for, for My Love is a Courgette. And yeah, they're all just staring at them, so I, confused. And, it, and, it's, and it, it's the it's almost a, I don't think they blink, because usually... No, it's really times, still. Um, when there's a still frame, you can see that the, the body's not moving, that the clay's not moving, mm-hmm. they will have the eyelids move mm-hmm. because it looks more human. Um, but in this shot, I don't think they do. They yeah. might do slightly on some of them. Um... But the shot is slightly moving away from mm-hmm. it. Like, it just... Dis- you would notice it. I think you would notice it. Normal people would. People and who th- like film. But I think almost normal people... Normal people don't even know what a camera is. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm just so isolated by my own surroundings. Yeah. Um, but the, at least the camera is slightly moving away, making mm-hmm. the frame bigger and them f- more centred in the middle yeah. and far away. And it looks... And it just tells the story so well because the emotion is clear. And I'm not even going to tell you what the emotion is. Yeah, it's is. so obvious. Uh, it watched a movie, bitch. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cut that out. Uh, yeah, and that's, I think, what makes this kind of animation, where there's a short, a small budget, it makes you really think of what images you're going to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and make sure to tell the story in every frame, if yeah. possible, you know. I think they do that in many shots. Yeah. I don't know if I would say every shot, but in a, a lot in a lot of them. More than your average movie. Yes. By far. Um 
and to, to stay on the topic of the animation and the clay, uh, I think they did a really good job with the characters because one of the problems of animation, right, the implicit problems, is that you don't have actor fa- actors' faces, which mm. do a lot of work for you in a normal film. You have to work around that, and you have to make the 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 models, I guess, what you call yeah, them. the molds. You have to make them look evocative, and these ones. They're not beautiful. Like they don't look as polished as, say, Shaun the Sheep or some they of those. They look more cute. This does not look as cute. They look quite strange. But yeah, they and look strange. A little big bit, eyes. They look, yeah, the really big eyes. They have kind of like a shade around their eyes as well. Yeah, which makes them look like kind of hollow. Yeah, slightly hollow, but not yeah. Um, and it's really, even though it's not beautiful, it's very evocative. You really yeah. get a sense of the emotion from them. They 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 look so present, you know. Mm. Like they look amazingly like they're real people, yeah. which can be a real problem, you know. Unless you're doing something really simple, like the Ardman, Sean the Sheep, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's hard to get those complex emotions. Because the, the film is really, really full of complex emotions, you know. These children have had hard lives. All of them, yeah. Continue to have hard lives to some extent. Yeah. Um, and it does, it, like I said before, it really, really never shies away from that. And I, I wanted to talk something about you. Do you have anything else to say? Um, For now, I have a little side no, Yeah, topic. yeah, no, I do. Go ahead. Uh, so, I was wondering if you think this film would be good to be seen by children. Because I don't know if I would call it a children's film. It's obviously about children, and it's about childhood. I wonder how it would resonate with children. I don't think it would resonate to the same degree. Well, I think it depends on what age this child is. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it would work as well with children mm-hmm. if they are under a certain age of conception of their own lives and what about the age of these kids because these kids are like 10 um i don't think i'm so bad at kind of children in that sense um i think maybe when you come up in your teens maybe mm-hmm. 11 13 depending on how your mind works um yeah because i think uh... you won't understand what it means to some degree I think one of the themes of the film is about how the children don't really fully have context for how tough their lives have been. You know, like with the collecting beer cans in the first scene, they don't understand. They don't really have a bigger picture. This is just how it how it is. It's kind of not life to them. Like it doesn't. Yeah. It's like um, you know, kids' brains are kind of plastic and mm-hmm. moldable. Kind of similar to Room. Yeah, in the way that they don't think this is abnormal because mm-hmm. they that's been their life. They've adapted, know? yeah. So so I don't think... Maybe maybe kids would resonate if they have had similar experiences to this. Uh-huh. Um, it doesn't have to be as bad, but just <laughs> had a troubling childhood at it, any point. It's just very subtle and quite complex. Like, I think you said that you didn't think it got through... Uh, got too deep but I think it really does get deep into these children as much as you can with them they have a lot of sadness they have a lot of layers to them you know especially the main the main three you know yeah Courgette uh, what's the girl's name um what is her name anyway the new girl Camille Camille Camille. and uh, Simon Simon yeah uh, those three who are the, the main focus, mm. they all have quite quite a lot to them, and there's a great moment towards the end, after they won't spoil what happens, when Simon directs all the other kids to go and play mm. as if he's going to join in um, to give himself a bit of alone time, and I think that's really, yeah. really sweet. I guess, I guess thinking about it again, there is a lot of complexity to them, and it's not it's it's kind of as you say like because these kids don't understand mm-hmm. that these things might be things you don't talk about or whatever mm-hmm. they they talk about it so freely that you do get a lot of information about them but i feel to some degree that i would have wanted to know a bit more i think it's inevitable when you have kind of a big there's loads of characters yeah. and i would love to know more about them individually but i think each of them get enough like i think why the film can get deep in like 60 minutes is because it's really like we said before Efficient. There's one character who has hair over one of her eyes, mm. uh, and there's a scar on that eye. She never shows that hair, and when she gets nervous, she starts to tap. Yeah, she tap with like the spoon. A t- um, 
and that just I think you get a lot from her even though there's not a huge full character mm. you get quite a solid sense of her from those two little motifs and the film is really good at like concise way of telling you like everything you need to know yeah yeah no I don't think that they do a bad job at all I think they do a really good job with mm-hmm. the time that they had and everything and I don't think that there's any character that's underdeveloped no if anything I think possibly the policeman that is in the movie uh-huh. is the only one that I wish to have known more about mm-hmm. I, I do kind of agree with that um, but, but it it's not it about him it doesn't much. necessarily affect the yeah. film too bad it's just something you're like I'd, li- I'd, I'd be interested to know a bit more about um, this guy so the, I, th- I think maybe if I'm being, o- being honest, that person is the only one that I would really mm-hmm. want to know more about. Um, but it doesn't need to be. I, I But even enjoyed... then, there's a really lovely moment where he's out with two of the kids yes. and uh, in a fair, and one of the, the fairground people says, oh, your children are beautiful. And he goes to say, they're not my children. And then he just says, thank you. Yeah. That's such a little moment, but it's so yeah, wonderfully no, there's, telling. There's amazing but yeah, moments. he's definitely not the most developed character mm. but i think intentionally you know it's not about him yeah, necessarily it's isn't. about the orphanage and all the kids but i think because i enjoyed the movie so much i wish to you know you always kind of want more my life is a courgette too yep <laughs> hopefully not my really. life is other vegetables my life is a potato yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> oh that's, that's joke. yeah clever um, um there's also a really great running joke i have to talk about uh, about the children's understanding of sex Oh, yeah. And they oh. talk about how they explode, how the men explode. It's really funny. It feels so right when sweat kids... sweat so much. And they uh, uh, shout affirmations, I think they say. Something yeah. like that's like silly. Um, on a really, like, side note, I know this is not relevant to almost anyone, but I feel like if you're just learning French yeah. and you want to see a movie, this would be quite good. Because yeah. I did, like, middle school French, so I know, like, a little bit of French, not that much. But I was able to pick up a fair amount of it. It's quite... Because they're children, they talk in quite simple ways. simple ways. So if you're like in between languages and want to like try out a film to help you with that, I think this would be really good. I think I think this movie, if you do know a little bit of French, don't watch it with subtitles at all. Yeah, you can. Because we started the movie watching it without subtitles, and uh-huh. the first maybe two minutes, yeah, there is not much talking. Uh-huh. There's a little bit of reverb of you can hear from a TV, but that's, that's not French. relevant. And I don't think that will even be translated if no, we wasn't subtitles. No. Yeah. Um, and I think to some degree you don't really need the subtitles to watch I think later on a little bit more yeah to get a more uh, enriched experience but you honestly but... could watch it with no sound and still get it because yeah. of how the storytelling is you definitely could um, that's what I'm trying to say yeah. not that you should yeah. but it's it comes across you understand the movie mm-hmm. to the biggest to a large degree the yeah. same without knowing what they're saying mm-hmm. um which is a amazing way. Yeah. Amazing voice acting by people. Well, not. I mean, <laughs> uh, the clay, the clay figures and the, the images mm-hmm. are so strong that you don't always need to know what they're saying. I agree. To understand. I totally agree. Um, and so, and you would even hear if you didn't know French, you would hear in the tonations of people. Mm-hmm. So th- mm-hmm. it is up to the the voice actors, the way that they act. You can tell what intentions and and what kind of characters they are and you know, what they're, how they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's one of the, the better films we've watched mm. here overall. Um, so to say my final thoughts, that's good. Um, I think it's, it's really great. It's both simple and complex in a way that's really compelling and sweet and emotional. And it's just, I just really recommend it to be honest. Yeah. No, I think everybody should watch this movie and it will... Yeah, yeah I, I think it will affect... It, it's it's not going to alienate anyone, really. No. I think everyone can get something out of it. Mm. Even if you're not big into movies, I think you'd really get something from it. No, I'd, I'd agree with you. What are your final thoughts? Same as yours. Bye. Really? Um, no, but I, I... I agree. I think anyone should watch this movie. You will get something interesting out of it. Mm-hmm. You know... I don't know if many people watch animated movies, but I think it's... If you have watched a lot of animated movies, I would say that this is the better one of stop-motion clay Yeah, that we've figures. seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you haven't ventured into that kind of things and watched a foreign film, 
you should yeah. definitely watch there, this there, movie. There is an English dub, but don't be a normie. Don't don't watch do it in French, guys. D- don't Subtitles. Watch yeah, come on, guys. If you're, it's not that hard. Unless you're a kid, and you can't read subtitles. Why can't kids read subtitles? I don't know. They they they, they can't be bothered to watch. Yeah. <laughs> if you're twelve, don't watch. No, I'm just kidding. No, do please do. Twelve, watch. If you're if you're four, don't watch. Yeah. Because you understand. They probably won't listen to this podcast anyway. That's true. I don't know how many four-year-olds. If you're a four-year-old, please comment down below. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So should we move on? Yeah. So now we're going to talk about our Mubi movie for this episode, which is a classic film, a film seen by many people. Yeah. Taxi Driver, starring Robert De Niro, directed by Martin Scorsese. It's about a taxi driver. He's a little crazy. What did you think, Jasmine? Oh my God. Uh, Efficiency. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, have that skill. I enjoy this movie. It was not what I expected. It's such an iconic. Um, I've seen lots of shots from this movie before I um, watched it. It was not what I expected. It. It was nice, but I think I liked it less than you, or possibly how much as much as you do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. yeah. So I I uh, really had a connection to this movie when I was like fourteen. Mm. It was like my favorite movie when I was like 14 years old. Um, I haven't seen it since. And going back to it, I definitely I definitely understand why I liked it then. It's an extremely what? male film. It's very much about the male experience of the world. Um, you know, in, in kind of every way. There's there's the female characters are fine, but it's not about them or about their experience, mm. you know. Even there's a character who's a child prostitute. Um, and even her story is very much filtered through Travis, you know, the main character. Um, and I can really see why it resonated with me and a lot of younger boys. Same kind of thing with Fight Club. We're very much oh, yeah. very much dealing with masculinity and, and stuff that, you know... And when... the same kind of overall story. Kind of. About... Yeah, of violence and... Yeah, I guess it's pretty dis- similar. Dis- disliking the world. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Um, and it's stuff you can really relate to when you're that age. Uh, being older now, um, I think Travis is a great character, and I think yeah. that's what keeps the film running. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just found the structure to be very weak and sort of. Lo- loose, I guess. It just kind of wanders around. It doesn't feel like it has much direction. Like, the big fin- finale relating to the child prostitute, that plot is basically only in- introduced in the last yeah. half an hour. And I think it's the best part, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I had watched this when maybe I watched my first kind of, like, big movies. Mm-hmm. The movies you should watch, you know, when you get into film. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I would have liked it more then... Or maybe even less because I was, I am not a thirteen-year-old, fourteen-year-old, fourteen-year-old boy. So, boy, um, if I would have liked it, then I don't think I would even watch this movie when I was watching. It. Never mind. This. Um, I was surprised by how little I liked it compared to all you've heard about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's a, it's a solid movie, but I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's one of no. the best movies. No, definitely not some stuff that I found really effective before, like there's a shot where Travis is on the phone and the camera tracks away, quite a famous shot, probably seen it in uh, the Every Frame of Painting video. Mm. That's where you saw it the first time. Yeah. Um, when I saw it in the movie, it kind of just didn't work. Yeah. The, I, I think like the best thing is Bernard Herman's soundtrack is great and the main theme is awesome. Yeah. And very memorable and very evocative. But the cinematography is quite scruffy. Like, I remember when we watched Mean Streets a couple months ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, I mean, I like them probably both equally, and I didn't really love Mean Streets that much. They both have similar problems, mm. just uh, Chuck Sherman has a better main character. Yeah, and the, just the cinematography is kind of poor. Do you know what I mean? It's not, yeah, it's not trying too hard. I think it's just kind of... But when it does, it's kind of scruffily done. Like, yeah. it's a bit poorly executed. I think there's shots, um, like an overhead shot. That comes in quite often. I don't think it really... I thought it worked um, at the very end, though, when they do that. Yeah, in the very end, I think that, mm-hmm. that would have been the 
only time they should have done it because I don't think it always kind of it's very stylized in a way that I didn't mm-hmm. think this movie needed to be yeah and it, just it, kind it, of it looks... didn't really get anything like the thing is is they have such good ground to make a great movie mm. with this character who is really an interesting character because um, he has this great balance of like darkness and innocence you know he, he's a really compelling character but the the visuals don't really show his story yeah. they're just kind of like the style is just style it doesn't it's not really showing you inside his head even though you're with him most of the time mm. i think it really fails at that i think what i like the most about taxi driver as i said is the last couple scenes mm-hmm. oh maybe not not the last couple scenes the last couple the last like story arc po- yeah part where they have the child prostitute because i think one of the best scenes is um when he meets her the first time mm-hmm. to talk to her he sees her before but he doesn't talk to her um yeah it's like it's like vaguely set up early on yeah but it's not really like of, a part of the story until the end yeah they kind of just like set up yeah um i think that is probably one of my favorite scenes because i, I think it's interesting the way he i guess wants to save her in a way to mm-hmm. save himself yeah just broadly um i think that's in- interesting and i like that scene and the way she acts she's a great actor yeah um, um i forgot her name but she's a famous actress jody jody foster there you jody go. foster still working yes um i think she's really great and i think their chemistry is really nice mm, and the way that the, the relationship between them guys um so I think that is my favorite part of the movie. And, and De Niro's performance is like unquestionably oh, yeah. amazing. Like yeah, he's no. really good in this film. Yeah. And it just makes you like remember that he did Dirty Grandpa last year and stuff like that. Oh god. <laughs> the, the rise and fall. Well, you yeah. know. But he's great. Like it's what, so good. What, would you recommend the film overall? I'm not sure actually. Mm-hmm. I think it's not I think I'd recommend so many more movies. Of course. Before this. Definitely. Um, um, but so I think maybe it's... just like to have seen it, to, to be able yeah, to it's, say it's... that you understand this kind of mm-hmm. part of De Niro's uh, early work. Um, and, and sort of is a big part of the American New Wave kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's fine. Like, it's good, but it's not great. But I would say, over, I would recommend it just for De Niro. I think it's mm. worth seeing his performance. But overall, it's not... It's not a masterpiece. It's a bit scruffy. It's unfocused. The structure's quite weak. Mm. Uh, and it just kind of is strung together by a good character. Yeah. I think that's all we want to say for this episode. Yep. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. For listening. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, for watching. For watching. <laughs> No, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Bye bye. Bye. Fade Out Podcast is edited by Jasmine Carlson, and the music is Deeper Love by The Agrarians. Thank you for listening.